I was born in a place that most people regard as a place they go for vacation or to go hunting or to go fishing. And I was real, real lucky to be someone who actually was born in that spot. And that was uh, northern Wisconsin, uh, way up in the woods. In fact, uh, our nickname, not one that we bestowed upon ourselves, but by the city folks that would come up from Minneapolis and Chicago, they called us Jack Pine Savages. And uh, lo and behold, that actually turned into a big event uh, in my hometown. It's called Jack Pine Savage Days. So we, we've lived up to that reputation our, our entire life, I guess. And, uh, you know, having grown up in, in that area, uh, I started fishing and hunting uh, pretty much as soon as I was able to walk and uh, grew up around it. Uh, my dad was actually, and I didn't realize it because he was my dad, uh, but he was actually revered by all of the other people in my circle. All my friends would come to me and say, you know, do you think Mr. Emerson could take me out to his secret fishing spots and things like that? And uh, it took me a while to realize that, you know, my dad was more than just my dad. Uh, he was actually a, a, a a really, really accomplished outdoorsman, hunter, fisher. Uh, I mean, he was, you know, I didn't see all of those things because that was just the way it was around my house, but that's the way other people saw him. So that, coming from that environment, you know, tying our own flies, uh, you know, always having fresh meat, uh, fresh fish, uh, you know, that was our way of life. And I remember I started hunting when I was old enough to pick up a gun, which was probably six or seven years old, BB guns and stuff, and that graduated to, I think I was 10 when I first got my uh, 22, and uh, when I was 12 I got my first deer rifle, and uh, my first uh, was a 10 gauge uh, shotgun at that time. So, you know, it was one of those things where hunting was just part of the way of life, and I actually have something that to me is very special. This is my, this is my dad's. Uh, hunting knife that uh, I inherited from him uh, after he passed away and you can see it's some off known brand but you can see that it's been sharpened down uh, so many times over the years that it, it looks more like a fillet knife which which it actually did a lot of filleting uh, than it than it did as a knife uh, in its original um, form but I have that it's real special to me and uh, of course my dad uh, wasn't a knife guy like I am, so when he sharpened it, he used the old uh, Sears and Roebuck uh, stone grinder, and, and uh, that's why it probably looks more like a fillet knife than, than anything else right now. But, you know, I've been a tactical guy uh, in, the, in my grown-up life, so to speak, but I came from a hunting and fishing background. I, I used knives my entire life because that's a huge part of, of being a hunter or a fisherman. And so got to the point where I decided to make some hunting knives and I loved it so much. I just made a couple custom ones for some friends and stuff like that. Uh, I got to the point where I loved it so much, it brought back so many fond memories that I decided to make uh, a couple of uh, folding hunters to add to our line. And so uh, I, the reason I'm telling you all this about the hunting is that I'm not a guy who uh, is just gonna say, I know how to make a hunting knife. I, I really do know how to make a hunting knife because I grew up in that environment. It's imbued in my, uh, in my past. It's in my DNA. And so the, one of the first ones we made was the Appalachian. Uh, this one is uh, a different knife called the Market Skinner. And it's patterned after uh, a knife uh, that was used by the guys that actually did market hunting and market skinning back in the uh, 17 and 1800s. Uh, really a nice uh, skinning knife, if you will. Uh, this knife you could use anywhere on any hunt, any time, from big game all the way down to rabbits. Uh, they're super sharp, they have a nice belly on them. Uh, there's a little bit of a clip on it. And we went with a brown G10 to kind of fit in with the, uh, the, the hunter's colors, if you will. And so this knife, uh, is something I'm real proud of. Again, it's called the Market Skinner. It's uh, liner lock and uh, 154 cm steel, and uh, real proud of it. Uh, it's part of my heritage, and I just hope that you guys uh, like it as much as I do. And again, it's one of those things, uh, you know, I've got my dad's hunting knife right here. Uh, maybe someday this will be something that your son or grandson or granddaughter uh, may have and say this was my dad's knife or my grandpa's knife 
because they're built to last. Hey guys, just want to remind you, if you haven't already, check out the Ernest Emerson podcast. We've got great guests, great stories, good information. And if you haven't been there already, go over there and check it out. You can find it on all the places where anybody can get a hold of uh, or download podcasts.